With a new administration in the United States taking office soon, there is also a new chance for transatlantic cooperation with regards to Iran's nuclear program. And today, um, it's my very pleasure uh, to, uh, like together with all of you, to welcome Member of Parliament Omid Nurepour as our guest and speaker to discuss the German approach to Iran, appeasement or change through rapprochement. Let me first of all briefly introduce our guest. Omid Nurepour was born in Tehran, but moved to Frankfurt at the age of 13. Since 2002, he holds a German citizenship, but still also his uh, Iranian passport. In 1996, he decided to join the Green Party and later on became a member of parliament in 2006. For the last seven years, he has been the Green spokesperson for foreign affairs in the Bundestag. Amit, it's our pleasure having you on this Monday's call. Uh, welcome, hello. And let me start with the first question right away. Maybe we can um, um, start with a little bit on the background of the history of German-Iranian relations. So maybe could you start with elaborating on this where you see the, the um, relations and how they developed over the past years. Thank you very much for having me. To be honest, Carson promised me that there would be someone here who maybe is ready to buy my Iranian citizenship because I can't get rid of. Um, uh, thank you very much for, for this kind of uh, deal. I think it was a good offer. Uh, so I, I'm very uh, pleased to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, the German-Iranian citizenship traditionally is named a traditionally good one. Uh, but of course we had peaks and, and, and lows, and then, but by the way, a lot of lows for the, for the last 30, 40 years. Uh, let me just remind you of uh, the assassination of Iranian oppositionals in the middle of Berlin in, in the beginning of the 90s. Uh, to be honest, there had been one aspect always constantly being here, and the, the only tradition we had is that uh, there is misbehavior on the Iranian side and no reaction on the German side. Uh, so um, this is uh, where we come from. Uh, but I think at, at least at the beginning of, of the war in Syria and Iran's, um, uh, Iran stepping in that aggressively, it, the mood in Germany changed. Uh, and we see in recently that the mood in, in Iran changed also. Uh, we usually are used, don't miss, miss get up, please, but, but we are used to, to see um, American or, or British hostages in Iranian prisons. Now we see Germans, there are five of them, five German citizens in this moment in the Iranian jail being host political hostages uh, for, uh, for uh, Iran or Iran's uh, uh, revolutionary guards. Uh, we have no idea if they want to exchange them or if it's going to be about... Um, about you know ex, uh, exchange of, of prisoners or or it is about uh, political bargain but um, we always had lows and highs and these are very very bad times for for these relations and there, there is one reason for that and this is Iran's behavior well thank you let's let's stay for the relations as they are now for another second and what would you say, what are actually the German interests when dealing and prioritizing what to do with Iran? Because we all know that critics often point out Europeans and especially German, Germany prioritizes business um, and trade over security concerns. So what's your opinion on that? I do not see that happening for the last years. I, I, I agree that in the 90s and in the, in the, the first de decade of this century, this has been a huge problem. I do not see that for, for the recent years. There, Iran is a huge challenge uh, to our interest in the Middle East when it comes to the highly aggressive role they are playing in countries like, like Syria, Lebanon, or Iraq. Or, or, or Yemen. Um, of course, uh, the, the way Iran is not only elaborating, but working on the elimination of Israel is a, excuse me, something is going on with my kid. You know how home of it is. I have to, I have to get out or find out what, what's going on. I'll be back in 10 seconds. I mute myself to shout at him, okay? <laughs> okay, that is uh, also an interesting and very, very- um, I'm back, I'm thing. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the way the, the way Iran is uh, eliminatory threat threatening Israel is, is definitely beyond any any kind of acceptance, uh, and and has to be faced in, in another way than had had been had had happened for for the last years. That means also that Iran's uh, ballistic um, uh, missile program is is not acceptable, uh, but it's the same with with the human rights situation in Iran. So there are a lot of challenges there. 
Um, but to be honest, there had been one huge spoiler, one huge uh, transatlantic spoiler for the last years. And the question is, is Iran stronger or less strong or this regime or the revolutionary guards are they stronger or less, less strong um, with a bomb? And the meaning of the JCPOA, and I know there had been loads of, of accept, wrong acceptations being put on that give, uh, for, from, from, by, by the American administration, by the Obama administration, and by the Europeans. But, but the question is how to uh, prevent Iran going, going nuclear. And this is what the JCPOA always has been about, and nothing more and nothing less. Very well. Um, as you mentioned, the JCPOA already. So with a new U.S. administration, we might see a new approach also coming from the U.S. to revive uh, the JCPOA. But how, for now, would you I mean, perceive Germany's role within the P5 plus 1 compared to the standpoint of the U.K. and France? Um, I hear some people say that France is more tough at least until the JCPOA was concluded. But what's your point on that? Is Germany strong enough, hard enough? I think there are all of these periods of of uh, of, of the of who's the, the the softest one, and this is bad. And, and I hope we gotta we gotta come together and and stand together as European uh, partners when it comes to Iran. We had, uh, but I just mentioned the, the assassination of the Iranian um, opposition oppositions uh, oppositional activists in the middle of Berlin in the 90s. The moment Germany then withdraw. Uh, his um, his ambassador from Tehran, uh, Total went in and 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 tried to, to get uh, oil deals with Iran. So that this is not about France being traditionally the tougher one. Uh, now for for the last years we we stand together we we couldn't stand together and then this is good, but. To be honest, for the last four years, we lost a lot of time trans, uh, to, to, to come together to, and, and with, with our transatlantic, transatlantic uh, partners, not only the United States, but also others, and, and find a way to tackle Iran's challenges I just mentioned. Uh, we obsessively, and I understand that because this is our neighborhood, we don't want to uh, be nuclearized. We obsessively tried to, to save the deal, but uh, missed the other homeworks. And the other homeworks, I just can't remember, can 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 repeat them. Is is uh, um, is facing Iran's uh, threat against Israel? Is this the missiles uh, program they have? The the human rights situation in of, of the country and their their aggression in 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 other countries in the region. Uh, this is, I think, a, a golden and maybe last opportunity we have to come together with the United States as Europeans and um, and uh, and uh, tackle these challenges. Mm. So that's indeed pretty pretty straight to the point. So those three um, issues you, you just mentioned, uh, the threat to, of, of Israel and also of the region with the Iranian missile program, uh, the human rights issue that we see um, on a daily basis in Iran, uh, and also the regional aggression with uh, the support of all the proxies. So what would you say, like if there is a chance to re-enter negotiations with Iran again, uh, in, in terms of the um, JCPOA or any other uh, form of multilateral agreement. Um, do you think that Germany would actually take those three issues, so the situation on the ground, um, into consideration when uh, renegotiating with Iran? So to, to say it in other words, do you believe that the German government actually has learned from the past? Um, I hope so, but to be honest, I hope that the American administration also learned from, from the past. Mm -hmm. So we have to fix the, we already had fixed the problem at least for 10 years of, of the Iranian nuclear program. I know that, how, what, that there are a lot of myths about the JCPOA. Let me just, just, just put it in one, one sentence, what the JCPOA is about. Uh, no deal with Iran means no inspections. No inspections means we have no idea what they're doing. That it, this is the Iranian fast track to the bomb. And this is what the JCPA is about. Not about making Iran more friendly. The day after the deal, I had an interview warning the, the world that it, they, they're going to get financial uh, measures now. They're going to, of course, spend it in Syria also. And they did. But having the bomb means that they can do even more in Syria. This is what, what, why, why the JCPOA is so, so important. But uh, I, I definitely can, 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 I do not talk, on behalf of my government, because uh, 
they don't like me. But but to, to be honest, it's obviously uh, uh, the, 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 maybe the last chance for the world opportunity to to, to challenge uh, to to take this, this challenge for 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 serious and and then push back Iran's aggression in the entire region, meaning also uh, uh, the the way they are they are threatening Israel. Hmm. Very, very well. Um, I mean, I mean, just to give everyone on the call the the picture in my introduction, I, I said you are the spokesperson on the foreign policy of the Green Party or the Green faction actually in the Bundestag. Uh, for those of you who do not follow the polls uh, of, of German politics on a regular or daily basis, the Greens are indeed doing very well. So they are uh, for for month now around and usually above twenty percent. Um, with our multi-party system here, that means a lot. The, the leading party so far, uh, the CDU CSU, Angela Merkel's party, is something like at 36 to 39, depending on the institute you, you may look at. So, Amit, your party is very likely to also become um, uh, part of the uh, next um, uh, coalition next year, as we have our federal elections, the Bundestag elections, end of September. So. Um, you have a very clear point when it comes to, to Iran, and, and we, we see that here on, on this call, and also when we read your statements in, in the press. But what would you say with a, um, with a Green Party participating in a next government? Is there a likelihood that uh, we see a change when it comes to German politics on Iran? Um, for our American friends, uh... This is some kind of a mood in the, in the bubble in Berlin that this is a natural law that the Green Party is going to be part of the next government. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, we are, we, are, we are very proud of, of our current shape. Um, yes, it's it, it definitely going to gonna happen. Uh, I myself put, put the first resolution condemning the human rights situation in Iran in the plenary floor a couple of weeks ago, uh, the first one since, since 10 years, because the situation is, is very bad and it's, it's, it has to be addressed. Um, to be honest, um, I have no idea if there's someone here in in, in this in, in this call who maybe could take that as, as an offensive one, uh, but I think our foreign minister is not dairy enough or is not standing up to all of these questions enough. So uh, no matter how ambitious we are, we're going to be more ambitious than he is, and in this question, and and Iran is a threat. To, to the entire region, especially to Israel. We definitely know that. We know about our, uh, our, our friendship and our duties toward Israel. So, and, and this is not only about Israel, I just can't repeat that. It's about Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Bahrain, uh, Yemen, and the human rights situation in Iran. So I, um, if there's one issue which definitely gonna, gonna be framed in another way, and if there's one issue we have to be more clear um, and, and more, and, and clearer and tougher, this is Iran. And yeah, I, I, politicians never should promise because nobody believed them. But uh, I, I would go in that direction. Well, let's uh, all keep our fingers crossed. And uh, I mean, you as a politician are making strong words, uh, which is, uh, I think, by, by everyone on the call, very appreciated and very precise to the point. And um, um, but uh, to, to our whole audience, probably Ahmed and I could go on like this for the next 45 minutes, but please feel free to raise your hand or put your questions also in the chat when there is anything on your mind you would like to discuss. And while everyone thinks about the next question, Ahmed, maybe um, let's, let's uh, have another focus on um, the German role. So would you think there is a chance that Germany might play a more active role in preventing Iranian imports and exports of significant weapon systems uh, in the future? Uh, this is uh, a disastrous issue, to be honest, because uh, the, the arms embargo against Iran should have been extended in the UN Security Council. And I'm not sure if this is only the responsibility of, of China and, and then Russia that it did not happen. I, you know, I've never seen such kind of um, ignorance for, for the usual method of negotiations of UN security resolutions as like we saw it from, from, from the campaigning US administration, but now it's gone. So it means that we have to take other, we have to take other measures and we have to 
to find other ways to prevent Iran getting not only the bomb, but also um, um, significant weapon systems, as yes, you called it. And to be honest, I don't think it is only about ballistics. It's also about uh, IT. Uh, it's also about everything which is which can and is used in a dual use way, not only conventional and nuclear, but also uh, when it comes to observation, for example, of, of their own people. Uh, and of course, they, we know that Iran is a huge spoiler when it comes to election integrity in, in our countries. We know that Iran is uh, um, massively funding um, destructive hackers. So it's when, you, when we're talking about significant weapon system, it's not only about uh, missiles or, or ballistics, it's about a lot of things. And yeah, it's also our role to do everything we can that Iran is not weaponized even more than they are already.